people of YouTube far and wide, welcome to the main event. Today's matchup features two Costco exclusive home theater packages. In this corner, weighing in at 86 pounds, is the brand new Klipsch Reference Cinema System 5.1.4 with Dolby Atmos. And in this corner, weighing in at 150 pounds, it's the 5.0.2 Klipsch Reference Dolby Atmos Surround System. What a time to be alive, am I right, Chad? That's right, Dan. With only a $50 difference in price, it's gonna be a tight matchup. What are your predictions? Well, Chad, my wife sure hates the look of big, bulky speakers in our living room. So the cinema system is definitely going to win over those who need a more compact system that still packs a wall. What are your predictions? Despite not coming with a subwoofer, I still think the tower system has a bit of an edge over the cinema system because of its better build quality. Mm, you got a point there. Well folks, grab a cold one, high five your loved ones, and strap in because we got ourselves a good old fashioned budget battle. Movies. Oh, oh. Music. Welcome all you lovely people of YouTube. If you just joined us, this is the channel of Elon Osborne, where he talks about movies, audio, and music. That's right, Dan. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss another head-to-head -head home theater comparison like this one. And let's not forget about one of our sponsors today, The Outdoors. Just get the f out there already. The Outdoors. Gotta love The Outdoors. Looks like we're getting underway and starting with build quality. The Cinema System speakers are all housed in hard, durable plastic, while the tower speakers are all housed in MDF, or medium density fiberboard. Advantage, tower system. Oh, right out of the gate, the tower system comes out swinging, much like my Aunt Irene and Uncle Arnold. Because they're swingers. That's right, Dan. Moving on to binding posts. The Cinema System has spring-loaded binding posts, which can sometimes be a bit of a hassle to get them in just right. Whereas the Tower System speakers all have five-way binding posts, which can accept five different types of speaker wire terminations, including banana plugs. Advantage, Tower System. Oh man, two in a row! Much like a running back with a terrible offensive line, this Cinema System is having a hard time finding an opening. Ooh, exciting moment here, folks. They are now going to be moving on to comparing the specs of both systems, starting with the satellite speakers. The frequency response of the Cinema System speakers is 90 Hz to 20 kHz, sensitivity rating of 92 decibels, and power handling of 75 watts RMS. The tower system has two R41M bookshelf speakers as their surrounds, with a frequency response of 68 Hz to 21 kHz. 90 decibel sensitivity rating, and power handling of 50 watts RMS. The R41M bookshelf speakers have a better frequency response, but they can't handle as much power as the Cinema System satellites, so they were trading blows there for a second. But you can't forget that there are two towers at play here, with a frequency response of 38 Hz to 21 kHz, 96 decibels of sensitivity, and 100 watts RMS power handling. You gotta respect those towers being able to handle some pretty low frequencies without the aid of a subwoofer. So, another advantage to the tower system? No question, Dan. Next spec. And now, center channels. The Cinema System center channel frequency response is 80 Hz to 20 kHz, 91 decibels sensitivity, and a power handling of 75 watts RMS. The tower system's frequency response is 89 Hz to 21 kHz, 95 decibels sensitivity, and 100 watts RMS power handling. Even though the Cinema System has a better frequency response, the tower system is more sensitive and can handle more power, so I say advantage tower system again. Woofers and tweeters are up now. The Cinema System satellites have 5.25 inch IMG woofers and 1 inch tweeters. 
The R41M bookshelf speakers have 4-inch IMG woofers and 1-inch tweeters. The cinema satellites are larger, but again, you're competing against the system with two towers, each having dual 6.5-inch IMG woofers and 1-inch tweeters. Advantage to the tower system again. It is looking brutal out there, Dan. My goodness. All right, center channels are up. The Cinema System has dual 4-inch IMG woofers and a 1-inch tweeter, whereas the Tower System has dual 5.25-inch IMG woofers and a 1-inch tweeter. It's starting to look embarrassing now, Dan. When will the Cinema System throw in the towel? Which reminds me of our next sponsor, Hygiene. Don't let the funk of your junk funk up your day. Hygiene. Moving on to subwoofers, and this is where the match might just start swinging the other way. You got that right, Dan. There is no competition in this category. Even though the basic front-firing 10-inch subwoofer that comes with the cinema system only goes down to 32 hertz and can even rattle its own cabinet if turned up too loud, it still dominates over the fact that the tower system doesn't come with a subwoofer at all. The cinema system just gave the tower system a huge uppercut. Next, we'll tackle all the specs of the height channels at once. In regards to frequency response and sensitivity, both systems say conforms to Dolby Atmos specifications. What the heck does that mean, Chad? Well, Dan, it's pretty tough to nail down specific numbers since many online forums have argued over the definitive answer on this. Some say set your crossover to the THX standard of 80 Hz, while others say the manual itself claims to set it to 150 Hz. So I guess to stay in the middle ground, I'd set my crossover to 120 Hz. Very interesting. Now, one big difference between these height channels is that the Cinema System has one 4-inch polyfiber woofer and the Tower System has a 5.25-inch copper IMG woofer and a 1-inch tweeter. That's right! Klipsch has basically taken an R51M bookshelf speaker and crammed it into the top of the tower, albeit a slightly weaker version of it that only has a power handling of 75 watts RMS. But that's still better than the Cinema System's 40 watts RMS. Dan, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but the advantage goes to the tower system, even though the cinema system has four height channels compared to the tower system's two. That's a bold statement there, Chad. Now this next category is a bit tough to judge because it gets a little subjective, depending on your home theater space and or preference of aesthetics when it comes to your speaker system. No doubt about it, they come in black with removable magnetic grills and those signature copper woofers. Uh. Guys, you're not saying anything. Don't do this. This is called dead air. It's never good. Guys! Now, the Cinema System speakers are sleeker with rounded edges compared to the boxed look of the Tower System speakers. And they will fit easier into a tighter situation, such as in an apartment or a smaller living room. So, at least in my household, my wife would prefer the Cinema System because she couldn't care less about all the other categories we've just been through. Most definitely, Dan, you can't forget about the opinion of the significant other, or SO as the kids are calling it nowadays. Even though the tower system has a larger footprint with more power, there are those who are not going to want that much bulk taking up space in their living room. So even though it's subjective, are we going to give the advantage to the cinema system on this chat? I believe so, Dan. Haters going to hate, but that ain't going to put food on the dinner plate. Not sure I understand what that means, but now we're going to throw it to Elon in the studio to talk about the sound quality of the two systems. Elon? Thanks, guys. Pleasure to be a part of this matchup tonight. So one thing I want to hit on is the fact that these pretty much are the same speakers. The size of the woofers might differ just a little bit, but the fact is that they are still made of the same materials. This is still the budget line of Klipsch speakers. It's not until you get to the RP line that you're going to be dealing with the ceramic woofers, which are just a little bit more rigid and brighter and just overall a better material. So the sound that is reproduced out of these woofers and tweeters is roughly the same. But I still think that the advantage goes to the tower system just because they are encased in MDF and not just hard plastic. What kind of sound difference does that make? Not that big of a sound difference. It just sounds a little bit tighter, a little bit more neutral. In the cinema system, it does sound like there's just a tiny bit of coloration added to the audio signal. 
as opposed to a sound that is more neutral and flat and can be EQ'd to your liking. So as far as just pound for pound sound that is being reproduced by these tweeters and woofers, there's not a huge difference, just a very, very slight, little bit more natural quality to the tower system because it's housed in MDF. I'm not really gonna talk about subwoofers just because the tower system doesn't come with one. So it's not exactly fair to compare that because obviously having a subwoofer and not having a subwoofer is a big difference, especially when it comes to the cinema sound. But it is still impressive how low the towers go as far as bass extension. Going down to 38 hertz isn't exactly all too cinematic because typically with music, you're gonna be dealing with somewhere between 40 and 60 hertz when you're talking about the bass. But when we're talking about movies, and the cinema experience, that's when you wanna have a subwoofer that goes down to at least 20 hertz, because that's where those sub bass frequencies live, about 20 to 40 hertz, or even 10 to 40 hertz, depending on how big and how expensive your subwoofer is. But the bass extension reproduced by the towers still did rattle my walls pretty good. But one of the biggest differences between these two systems is the Atmos upward firing speakers. Remember, the cinema system just has that one polyfiber woofer on top that is shooting sound up to your ceiling. So when I was watching movies, I did kind of have to put my ear a little bit close to it just to even hear what it was trying to bounce off my ceiling. So there is something that comes out, it's just pretty weak. So like I said in the official cinema system review, it does add a little bit of height, but honestly, it is kind of borderline gimmicky. Because now that I've compared this system to the tower system, I honestly don't think they're really that powerful enough to even bounce it off of eight foot ceilings. Unless I guess you went into the software of your receiver and just cranked them up. But since they only have a power rating of 40 watts RMS, I don't want to test that resiliency and crank them up either. Now when I fired up the tower system, it was immediately apparent that there was actual sound coming out of those upward firing speakers. I didn't even have to get my ear all that close to them to realize, okay, yeah, there is sound coming out of those. So you're definitely going to get a better Atmos experience with the tower system, which makes sense because it has an actual speaker shoved into the top of the tower with a woofer, with a tweeter, so you're going to get some audio with some power behind it that is going to bounce off your ceilings and come to your listening position. Now, because these are both still budget systems, they aren't exactly going to blow you away if you do have a larger space for your home theater. In my little setup, I am sitting about 10 feet away. And even when listening to the tower system, if I were to inch closer and closer and closer, it's not just the fact that it seemed louder because I was getting closer to the speakers, but the finer details did seem to come out better if I was closer to it. So these speakers really aren't made to throw the sound large distances, just because their power ratings are okay. So I would recommend both of these systems for more moderate sized home theater space, because the bigger your home theater space gets, the more power you're going to need behind those speakers in order for all the detail that you want to hear to travel that distance from the speaker to your listening position. Does that make sense? It's just the science behind audio. It just takes a lot of power to push those sound waves through all those air molecules to your ears. So the more molecules it has to cascade through, the more power you're going to need. Bottom line is, I still do favor the tower speakers even though I know they're not meant for everyone, but I still consider this the best bargain you will find under $1,000 with two towers and Atmos outfiring speakers, two bookshelves, and a relatively large center speaker. Nobody comes close, and I don't know how Costco gets away with it. So that's my take. Back to you, Dan and Chad. So there you have it, folks. The Costco exclusive 5.0.2 Dolby Atmos surround sound system is the clear winner between these two systems. That's right, Dan. I kind of saw this coming, but at the same time, that doesn't discount the fact that this system was made for those who just have a smaller living area. Or maybe they live in an apartment, but still want to have some big cinematic sound. We've all been there before. I remember when I used to live in an apartment years ago, this tower system would definitely be way too big for that. That about wraps up this matchup, folks. Did it surprise you or did you know all along? Let us know in the comments below. Now, just a reminder, please be kind to each other out there. 
Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And, and of, of course, course, always be listening. listening.